Hey there, it's Nicole Holland from Get Guest Ready Podcast and the Business Building Rockstar Show. And I'm super, super stoked to be hanging out with my friend Dennis for the 5 Minute Bark Podcast. Okay, so we're on the five minute bark here today and I'm so excited. This is really a really neat story because when I started podcasting, I ran across this lady named Nicole Holland and I ran into her online. She was doing some different things with online summits. I just really loved the idea because I knew that I was interviewing all these people and I wanted to do something similar. Well, it's about a year and a half later and today I have the special opportunity to have her on my show and I wanna welcome Nicole Holland here today with guest get, excuse me, Get Guests Ready, which is something I really want to talk about here today because I have a lot of guests on my show and we kind of have to, and we'll talk about this during this podcast, is we have to get them kind of fired up for the show and it's really exciting and she's taken that to another level. She said, I'm tired of this. I want to take it to a new level and help people be the best guests possible. So Nicole, say hello on the show today. How you doing? Hello. Um, hey. <laughs> uh, I'm really so excited to be talking to you here. I mean, obviously we had a great hour and 20 minute talk yesterday together and she's uh she's kind of really kicked me in the butt and I'm really kind of still actually shucking up by it it's really cool so but she's a very <laughs> brilliant person and um she's got a lot to share today about this so so basically let's just start off with, with right to the to the meat here why did you decide to start this company yeah so I decided to start a business for myself to have control to have freedom and to be able to do whatever I wanted to do whenever I wanted to do it um but it didn't take off. Like I didn't actually spend time. In fact, you were just asking me before we started about my business name and my business name that's legally um, uh, registered is not the name I actually go by now because I started my business um, when I was still working and I didn't, I I had lots of ideas for it. um, And I did lots of things that most people do, like, you know, what are business cards and make up my menus of services and all this different stuff. And I even bought things like I bought pens and I bought, um, you know, travel mugs and bags, all kinds of, I have it, but I don't use the, I, I I totally don't, I'm, I am not my business, um, that I started. I, I got to a point where at, when I actually really was doing something what I had thought I wanted to do was completely different. And so I built my brand around me and I thought, I don't have to change the business. I just have to allow my, uh, what, whatever my energy is at the time, whatever I'm passionate about to flow out. And I'm going to find the people who resonate with that. And right now that is podcast guesting. When you came across me, it was online summit. So who knows what it'll be in five years, but podcast guesting is what I'm focused on today. I think, I think, uh, Nicole, we both kind of share that same journey. Cause, uh, you know, my company originally was Cody dog interactive and, um, but I wanted to keep the name because one, I like the name and I still, I already had the URL and I just don't want to go out and find some stupid URL that's just ridiculous. It's got dashes and dots and, you know, dinglings in it and stuff. So I want to just keep that name. So I started my podcast and I started five minute bark podcast. Well, the podcast was just me by myself at first giving four days of inspirational moments. And then I needed to interview some people because I got these like high profile guests. I was like, okay, I can't turn this up. So I was like, which podcast can I use? Well, I had this one made America, which was all about me. And then I had five minute bark and I was like, well, I just have to do it on five minute bark. And now I do a five minute bark, but it's 20 minutes long or 30 minutes long because we just keep barking, keep talking. So I kind of share that same, that same story with you because you know, it's, it's just like, what's the sense of starting something new when you already got the name? It's just a name, right? And then what yeah. you really do is what counts. Yeah. And why stay stuck in something that doesn't resonate anymore? So for example, I'm a master coach. I've been coaching for a really long time. Um, I took a break from coaching though, officially, like as a business to work in a job. And when I was there, excuse me, when I decided to start my business, I put a lot of thought into the name and how do I, and the, the branding and everything, how do I convey what really my values are and all that stuff. And so I came up with this perfect name. And, um, at the time and what I was planning on doing was what I had done in the past, which was family, uh, and youth coaching. So dealing with teens that were, you know, misbehaving and dealing with parents who were having trouble communicating with their teens and communicating with each other and almost like a super nanny kind of, 
um, coaching thing where I would go in and see what was going on and assess the situation and then help them come up with a plan for the whole family to, um, to be able to better communicate. And, and when I quit my job, what was very clear to me was the last thing I wanted to do was deal with crisis. And I didn't want to deal. And as much as I love kids and I love relationship coaching, and I love all of that. It just was so not what I wanted to do. And so I had to explore, well, what do I want to do? Who do I want to work with? And that's how I decided to work in the entrepreneurial space. And then from there, um, became a podcaster. And when I was podcasting, I was finding that my expectation oftentimes was, wow, these, these amazing uh, guests want to be on my show and they're, you know, they have so much prestige and they've been doing this so long and I'm so excited, but I was finding that they weren't necessarily great guests and that somebody's perceived level of success and notoriety doesn't necessarily equate to uh, the delivery, right? And somebody who is lesser known sometimes was an amazing guest. And this isn't across the board. I should say that, you know, on both sides, there were both. But I started really paying attention to what makes a great guest. Why am I experiencing joy and elation? And after after the interview, I'm like, how can I help you? Who can I introduce you to? What can I do for you? Why is it that I have that feeling with some people and with other people? I'm like, I can't even get through this whole time that we're scheduled to be together. Um, and so as I started making those realizations, having those realizations, I started making guesses about, oh, maybe it's this, maybe it's that. And then I would go out and I would test my theories um, and then I would share these. I would share my experiences with guests that I had a great rapport with, with my friends, with my colleagues. And um, yeah, over time, people were like, you need to teach this, you need to teach this. And so then I started teaching it like officially. I had last summer um, a beta program where I actually taught and I called it interviews that convert. And so I bought the domain name interviews that convert.com for the program. But then I, my, what was once just a program is now a whole business model. And so I kept that, uh, that website and I go by interviews that convert.com. I go by Nicole Holland. Um, but my, <laughs> but, um, Adler services, which is my legal name, um, you won't find except on like the, uh, the legal documentation or the so. payment stub payment stub. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right, so I love this because it's, I mean, I'm obviously I'm a podcaster too. And I, I see this situation and you know, I, I'm going to be right with you on that because the higher profile people, you know, obviously like you get a little, little semi in, in, uh, intimidated. Like I'm a little intimidated with you a little bit. So, um, but I'm going to get over it. And, um, but you're right. Some of these people just, they just ramble for 20 minutes or they, you know, just kind of go on random, random directions because they, I guess they can, they're really hard to, to get into a, what's called state, you know, um, can't get them to slow down, uh, be more, uh, authentic. And you know, it's funny cause I'm just, as I'm doing this podcast with you, I'm just really kind of think of mainstream media and how those interviews are handled. They're, they're set questions to the second. You got 30 seconds, you got two minutes, you got five minutes and they're just questions. And, and I kind of look back and I look at what we do and what mainstream does and mainstream sucks. I think mainstream sucks compared to podcasts because <laughs> they're not, I have to argue with you. Oh, on really? That. Come on, let's box. <laughs> well, yeah, let's box a little bit. Um, so I don't think mainstream sucks at all. I think it's a different medium. And I think the error that people make is thinking it's the same. Podcasting is such a unique medium and it allows people to really do them. So each podcaster individually chooses what's the format of their show. What do they want to share? How do they want to share it? Some podcasts really are aspiring, aspiring to be like mainstream media but not everyone is. And so the error is that people are often taught that you can use the same strategy across the board, but, and, and you can, and as you build up that authority, you may get on lots of shows, but it's a small community and people talk and you won't get known as a great guest. In fact, you may get known as a not great guest. And it's not just from people talking, but with podcasts, 
each listenership is as unique as the host. And so if you're not taking the time to listen to the show and understand what the host's message is and understand what the audience wants from the interviews done on that, and you're just going in there with your same sound bites that you use on every place, then you're going to oftentimes just lose the audience. And, and I, people might say, eh, I don't care. You know, it's a numbers game, but really, is it worth it? Like, why would you spend your time? Do you value your time and yourself so little, you know, on one hand, people are like, I'm so important, but you obviously aren't treating yourself or the people you're interacting with as you're important because you're not taking the time to honor them and ask, what do they want? You know, before we started, Dennis, you asked me, is there anything that I want to make sure we cover? And I'm like, no, this is this is your show. I'm here. I'm I never know what's going to come up on a show. And even when people send me um, because some podcasters will send set questions and they have a very structured um, show. And if I know that they have a structured show, I will go and spend the time really thinking about each question beforehand. I still don't write it down and everything. I still try and go with in the moment. Um, but otherwise, it's it's I don't want to come in with my own agenda. I really want to be I want to be as authentic as I can and be able to serve your audience as well as I can. And the only way I can do that is if I'm in it with you, I'm present and I'm in the trenches. So that was a bit of a blah, 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 blah. sorry. No, it's, it's, <laughs> no, you're right. I mean, it's, it's um, forming or conforming to what's gonna happen, you know, in, in the moment. I mean, which is like how life is anyway, right? It's kind of like a conforming to the moment. I mean, okay, we're gonna go to the game. We're gonna blow this next, you know, the, the other team out 10 nothing. Oh shit, they're, they're beating us by 10 nothing. Go change your, your game, you know? Well, this is a real, like, you know, come on a podcast. Okay, I'm gonna talk about my business. I'm gonna talk about the sales and how to get to, oh my God, I'm talking about um, something else. <laughs> and you have to kind of be ready for that. And you know, but that, that other something else ends up being better somehow. And um, so I kind of like this. Um, look at me in my arms. So we got people out there, all right? They want to be guest ready, okay? You take them in. Can you tell me about like one of these transformations? I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just dying to hear how like the difference is, especially dealing with these high profile people because they have to listen to you or, or maybe don't want to listen to you because they think they know everything. And then you change them and they're like, ah. No, I don't. Oh my gosh, I don't work with them. Um, I actually had a client I fired because he felt that, you know, he he knew what was best. And, you know, I can't, I can't do surgery and I can't um, practice law, but I know podcast guesting and I have spoken with enough podcasters and I have formed my opinion enough that I'm very, very confident um, in what I do. And I get the feedback from hosts and from clients and from listeners that supports that. Um, so, you know, one of the biggest things I think that's important is in any business, we have to know who our ideal avatar is. And the attributes of my ideal clients is that they respect me, they like me, they trust me, and that they are willing to be coached by me. And so my clients, I mean, I, I work with people at different levels. Um, but for my VIP clients that come to me, they are experts in their thing. They are amazing at what they do, but they also are amazing and successful because they recognize that they can get supports from other places to, to make them more amazing in different areas that they aren't the best at, let's say, you know? Um, and so what happens is my clients come to me with a good understanding of how to do, um, interviews and they're respected and they're admired and they've done lots of interviews. But what happens is we make little tweaks and shifts. Um, we talk about, it, it's so custom to each client. So, um, Everything from positioning to conversion, you know, turning listeners into leads, 
um, whatever they need. My clients aren't just getting booked on shows by me, but they're actually getting me as a coach. So we do lot. I'll listen to their episodes. I'll give them feedback. I'll tell them, Hey, next time, you know, you did this, maybe next time think about this. Um, and what they experience is like all of our, wow, I didn't even know this was possible. Wow. I just got a client from this directly. Wow. I just, um, have, this person wants to promote me now. Wow. 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 And I get the same from podcast hosts who don't know it can be that good, right? Because we do get used to, at least I know when I was starting out, I was getting used to the status quo. And when I was, uh, surveying podcasters, uh, you know, a lot of, a, a lot of them weren't getting, um, even thank you emails, you know, or they weren't, they, they, they were having guests more than far less than half the guests, even sharing the episodes and stuff like this, things that you expect, but then you kind of get beat down and you're like, this is just the way it is. I just have to deal with it. And so when somebody does something better than the norm, it's like, wow, they're great. And I expect that my clients do better than the norm because I promised that to hosts. And so when the hosts are like, you know, leaving me voice messages and they're messaging me after interviews and they're like, oh my gosh, I think that was the best interview I've ever done. And then that same host, you know, a few weeks later, will message me about another one of my clients. Oh my gosh, I think that was the best interview I've ever done. So it's, they're experiencing, um, just this shift in, in thinking and these little tweaks and, uh, yeah, I don't know if that answers the question, but then I, I mean, I don't only work with people at the VIP booking level. I also work with people, um, where I've got actually a right now, as we're recording, I'm enrolling people into my 90 day intensive program where we get it done. We get them booked and I walk them through everything I do for my VIP clients. We do it together and, um, I actually introduce them to hosts who are looking for guests and make those personal introductions to hosts that know me and respect me. And so, um, yeah, there's, th and then I've got also with get guest ready. Um, it's the podcast. There's a free course that goes with that. And then I've got a membership group where it's, uh, you know, they, people come twice a month and I can ask me questions and I can interact with them in the Facebook group, but it's, uh, less direct coaching. So. No, yeah. I mean, it's, it, as a listener, if you're listening right now and you're considering getting on more podcasts or even just kind of like for starting out either way, um, there's just, there's a two way street to it. There really is because the host's job is to bring out the best in you. And obviously he's, he or she's got to look good as well as because they're trying to keep themselves going. But th there's really the, the two sides of it and the, you just don't even know what's going to happen. I, I had an example here of a, um, I had a coach, a, a life coach on Christina Berkeley. I'm not sure if you know her, but really well-known New York City gal makes 250 grand a month doing coaching. And she came on. She's like, wow, this is just amazing. I had such a great time. And we became good, close friends. Uh, and she's referred people and things have happened. And the, the, the great thing is, is when you do come on uh, and you hire somebody like Nicole and she takes you to that new level, I've had somebody reach out recently uh, a week or two ago actually about a month ago now. And she sent me a personal YouTube video saying, I watched your podcast. I'm looking for a coach. Um, I watched your interview with Christina. This is like a year and a half later. Um, and I found the trust, uh, the no like and trust in Christina. And she signed up for a $9,000 coaching program with her. So there's, there's several levels. So people are going to be looking for the no like and trust in you as a guest. Um, they're going to be looking into, you know, it's kind of like a, a testing ground for you. Like, how are you going to, how are you going to show up? Right. So these are real results. I mean, I just got, I was just, um, you know, Nicole kind of got on my ass yesterday and said, start calling people and start getting, getting a hold of people. <laughs> and I, and I was reaching out to a guest. I'm not sure if I shared this with you, but he, I, I was saying, Hey, you know, I'm looking for some referrals for my show. And he sent me back a comment. He said, he has a, uh, a business dealing with helping moms with newborns, um, get going and like the whole adjusting to that lifestyle. And he's like, thank you for that comment. Honestly, I feel your show has springboarded me, um, forward. And so it's like to hear that as a host, that's amazing. So there's two things that go on both as a host and as a guest, there's a, there's kind of like a little magic that everybody overlooks, you know, Absolutely. um, they overlook because this is a time you and I are spending together. It's what we want to make of that time. And how valuable that time is and and by you helping these people understand that right 
and take the value in it, they may not get that $10,000 client that day or that week. Um, podcasts are up there for a very long time. They're not just there randomly. So um, you can get a guest a year from now. It's a long-term investment, right? So investing in you and investing in that podcast, the time in the podcast are two investments in one that will go a long-term. I think that's right. And that you that's a good point for why you really need to strategically get on podcasts and conscientiously get on podcasts. And one of the things that I see and that I hear people teaching about is just get on as many podcasts as you can. And I completely disagree with that. I think, you know, you talk about the magic and that is really what I help my clients with. It's a a matchmaking. You have to focus on what the value is and for both, for both parties and for the audience, because at the end of the day, the audience is absolutely the most important factor in the equation, because without an audience, there is no show. I mean, somebody can sit there in their basement and they can broadcast, but if they don't care about building an audience that trusts them, that knows them, that likes them and that believes in them, then they can't have a viable show right? They can do it for hobby, but not professionally. And so if you're thinking about, excuse me, if you're thinking about um, leveraging podcasts as an expert or to get known as an expert, and you can do this even if you're just starting out. And that's one thing I help people with as well. Pardon me. That's one thing I help people with as well is that even if you don't have any experience podcast guesting, it doesn't matter. As long as you have value that you know and you have something to offer, you have something to sell. And even if you're not selling anything yet and you're just starting out and you want to build your platform, if you have a freebie or a lead magnet to give, you have an email list that you're building. As long as you have certain things in place, I can help you. Podcast guesting is the best way to build an authority platform fast. And you don't want to make mistakes because it is evergreen. And as you go to get on more shows that are more professional and higher profile, those people have teams or are doing themselves vetting, right? So people are going to listen to your past interviews. And if you come off and you don't sound good, or you don't position the host well, or you do something that is in their mind, a no, no, they will not have you on the show. Right. So by really caring from the beginning or from right now, even if you've already started, I don't want people to be like, oh, my gosh, what did I do wrong? Because that's how I was. Once I started realizing, holy cannoli, this is not good. And then I was like, oh, my gosh, the interviews that I did before I was like reaching out to the podcast. I was I'm like, I'm sorry, I was a bad guest. They're like, what are you talking about? You're a great guest. I'm like, no, I wasn't. Um, So it doesn't matter what you've already done to this point, but like as of today, make that commitment to get guest ready and to really intentionally and only intentionally get on shows to build your business. Not the way where you're just, you know, sending lots of cold pitches and throwing spaghetti at the wall. You have to do the work or you hire somebody to do the work. You know, you bring up a, a good point that I can, I guess can help people scenarize is you go to a networking, you've been, you've been a networking meeting, right? One of those happy hour networking meeting. There's a million people. And then you get those people in the room that run around to everybody handing their business card. Hey, hey, and that they, you know, running around, giving you a business card. And you're like, so, so annoying, dude, just get away. And that's kind of how you can be perceived in the podcast world. You run around trying to do your business card through a podcast and you just, you're right. When people talk, they do talk. I, I mean, I'm, I'm friends with a lot of podcasters. Now we all go to conferences, by the way, we all go to conferences and we talk and um, and we share and Hey, this is a great guest and so on and so forth. Um, but it's, it's true. You can, it, there's a big difference between quantity, quality, and, um, being guest ready. And I think that that's something too to mention that we do talk and most quality podcasters, most professional podcasters are not searching for guests. They're usually open to them, but they're seeking referrals from their network of people that they trust and respect. So it is extremely hard for somebody who does not have those relationships to get on the shows that most people say they want to get on. And, and you probably, if, 
if you're thinking, oh, I want to be on this show because it's the biggest one in my industry, it's probably not the best fit for you because it may not be the one that's going to move the needle for you in your business. And frankly, if you're in business, you need to be making money, right? It's not about it. it podcast guesting can help you grow your um, celebrity status and your authority and all that. But if you could get in front of a hundred people and have those people so engaged and so interested in you and have, you know, people who want to follow up and maybe want to buy your $9,000 program or what have you, you are in a much better position to do a whole bunch of those smaller shows that are very engaged than you are to go and do a really big show that puts out so much content and so many people get introduced that the audience doesn't respond because the audience is tuning in generally for the host. They're in love with the host. They enjoy the host. And so they're not really listening as much. It's kind of like going back to that networking event, right? So it's like, Great. So you go on a show with a huge listenership and an audience that just just can't get enough of the host. Great. So now you're going in and you're handing out business cards and you're saying, here's what I do. Here's what I do. Here's what I do. And these people are like, cool, cool, cool. I'm listening to the host. Right. Whereas you go into a show that maybe isn't as big, but that the, the host has spent the time to cultivate and curate a really engaged audience. And you're like, this is what I do. And they're like, oh my gosh, tell me more. And that's one of the things that I help my clients with both in the done for you and the done with you is really understanding how listeners convert um, when it comes to podcast guesting. You know, it's funny. I, you know, I had two things in my mind when you were talking and but the first one, cause I just, it's top is, um, it's funny as a host of a podcast, we become famous, <laughs> but I, we don't really do anything. We just sit there and like ask a question, you know, it's like kind of like, you know, kind of like Howard Stern, I guess, like, it's like, dude, you just ask questions and you just invite people in or they just actually beg you to come on their show. It's like, it's, it's really the guests that it's really, are really the studs, you know? Um, and it's really kind of fun, funny to think about that. And, um, but along the lines of the, the guests, you mentioned celebrity status and I think that kind of can get overlooked the magnitude of if you go on one show, you do a great job. You go on another show, you do a great job. How much that can build on your credibility going forward for one, getting on other podcasts, but two on your website, on your portfolio. I already always say this to people is like, for example, if you're a real estate agent, you have a lot of comp competition, especially here in La Jolla. Okay. There's the fancy schmancies and if you can just be in a podcast and have a good quality interview that you could share with a client, listen, I know you have a lot of opportunities out there, but I want you to take a look at this episode and check me out uh, so you can get me a little, learn a little more about me, what I'm doing, not how many sales I do or how many, how I treat people, how I comfort. It's certainly a, a tool to get over the edge. Absolutely a tool. And, you know, it also can alleviate a lot of the busy work that you do, because as a realtor, how many times are you hearing from people who are wasting your time? They're not ready to buy. They don't have enough information. You can leverage these podcast interviews, like you said, on your website or in a funnel, right? You can set things up so that when somebody comes to you as a cold lead, you can then share with them different pieces of content to prepare them to actually have a conversation with you. So you're not wasting your time on phone calls. You're not wasting your time going and seeing places, but you're really, really qualifying your prospects beforehand so that the, by, by the time you get on the phone, the, the call is about them contracting with you. The legwork, the legwork's all done. It's, it's all Kinda done. Like the one I talked about earlier, like the legwork was already done for Christina. When she came on the podcast, the person just signed up because she already heard about her. She already knew like I, uh, it's, it turns the questions around to where Christina was probably questioning her versus her. Cause she was already sold on Christina. Now it was just like, well, should I take you on as a client? It actually reverses, right? It reverses that, you know, there's uh, the difference in market, right? Um, what is it? Uh, I'm spacing on it, but, uh, it's a buyer's market or a seller's market, right? So it converts the market for you. So, um, that's something that's very interesting as well. So if you're prepared, you're doing your job, you're doing good podcasts, you can convert your, 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 your process of selling They're You're, they're going to be begging to ha to be with you because you already have the credibility. Exactly. And then it comes to a point of, do you want to work with them? Right. And so I have, um, later this week, 
a call with a woman who signed up for a call. I actually took the ability to sign up for a call off of my website. I thought I already had, but there was like one place that, that she got in there. Um, but she found it and I don't know how she found it, but she found it. And, um, on the, the booking form, she already identified that we're going to be talking about her signing up as a top tier client. She already identified that I've never met her and I don't even know where she heard me from, but she, stated in the form what she wants, where she's at, and that she's ready to, this is a sales conversation. This isn't a getting to know you conversation or a discovery call. This call is going to be about what are your needs and how can I, can I meet them? Do I want to meet them? And do you want to work with me? And so you really can, um, have that experience when you're leveraging podcasts intentionally, strategically, and correctly. And you said before about, you know, uh, when you're building up this reputation for being a great guest, and it's so true. I know as a podcaster, I was doing it all the time. I was like, for my great guests, I'd be like, you're awesome. Are you looking for more podcasts? Because let me let me introduce you to a couple of my friends that I think you'd be a great fit for. Um, and podcasters contact me all the time. Hey, I had this great guest. Are you looking for guests? Because I think they'd be a really good match for you. And so when you make that kind of quality impression on a podcast host, it's like your doors open up just for the good stuff, not for the crap stuff that is trickling in and, and isn't really a fit, but you're opening your doors up to people who are going to just potentially change your life. Yeah. Listeners, I think it's just really simple. I mean, you go on, go out into public, you talk to people, reevaluate how you talk to people, reevaluate. It's, it's, I mean, you're essentially living a podcast, right? You're living a podcast. How valuable is, is how you communicate? I mean, your expertise can take people beyond just a podcast interview. I mean, you could take it into real life, into an agreement room where you're trying to set a deal, all these things. Cause I'm sure the, the, the learning language from you, body position, all that kind of stuff. And you take this, I mean, this type of information is, is far more valuable than than just having a great opt-in. <laughs> I mean, because you have to get that communication done to get the signing of the deal going for the people. So um, I just really cannot express how it's important to find a coach um, in this area. And again, bef- I just met uh, Nicole yesterday. We spent an hour and 20-something minutes on the phone, and um, I can certainly attest to um, her persistence. She's a no bullshit persistent person who's going to tell it how it is. And no matter how much of a tough guy or a tough woman you think you are, she's going to put you in your place and she's going to make sure that you are doing your job uh, the right way or, or acting or, or, or on your best behave, you know, on, on your best, on behalf of yourself, the best, to your highest. To your highest. Yeah. Because, and you know what? It's because I believe in the people that I spend time with. It's because I know you're a rock star. I know my clients are rock stars. And so sometimes we need somebody to go to bat for us against ourselves, you know, because we all shrink. I don't care who you are, or where you are, no matter what kind of success you've accumulated, we all need somebody who can stand up and call us out on our BS and also help us. I mean, I have a client who is amazing. And does a great job at positioning themselves as amazing. But when we talk and and when we get into that, um, because again, I coach my clients. I don't just book them, right? We, We get into the nitty gritty because it's important that when you show up on a, a podcast, you're showing up like a rock star because you are a rock star. But sometimes we, 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 say or do things that deposition us and it's unintentional, but it happens. And so sometimes you need somebody that's going to give you a kick in the butt and, and stand up for you against you. Absolutely. And that's you. That's me. (laughs) That's you. (laughs) Nicole, this is awesome. We're 20 minutes over our time and we just can keep on talking and talking and talking, but uh, you're amazing. You really are amazing. And I appreciate your time before this and on the show here. Um, I'm hundred percent confident you're obviously doing great things for people. And like I said, um, 
she she's helped me even before we even knew each other and she's here today sharing with you out there uh the possibilities and the excitement of podcasting and and being the best guest you can be uh, it, again i say it over and over again in, in all my podcasts even tiger woods has a coach um and he's the best in the world so or wasn't the best in the world i guess it's where i'm getting gold is showing my age but it's it's important to have that other person that thinks outside their box i mean I've had businesses and sold them and done things, but I know more and more as I go by, I have to have that outside the box thinking going on because you're in your box and you're running around in that box and you're getting lost in that box and you're doing great things in that box, but you're spinning your circles. And, and, um, but with this kind of thing, this is this new uh, adventure we're going through with podcasting coming um, more and more into our wor- our worlds. A lot of people still don't know about podcasting, believe it or not. And it's, it's a powerful tool where you can go and you can find, um, unique information on very different subjects. So it, it's, it's, it's not just like getting on TV, you're getting on, you're getting a niche market when you, when you come on a certain podcast. So, um, Nicole can help you with that. So, Thank you so, much. so where can they find Nicole is the question we're going to ask them. The best place to find Nicole is interviews that convert.com forward slash bark B A R K for the five minute bark. Um, what I'm going to do is I've mentioned get guest ready, um, the, the podcast and the free course. So I'm going to link that up there. And also I've got my social media profiles and my, um, my email. So if you want to shoot me a message, you know, if this sounds like something that's interesting to you, I'm not sure when this is going live, but as I said, right now I am enrolling. Um, it's a very small group and there's only a few spa- spaces left. But if you think that, um, having my support and in, in getting, on shows and getting guests ready is a value. Shoot me an email, let me know right away. Um, so we can hop on a call and, and really suss it out and find out. Um, so again, that's interviews that convert.com forward slash bark. And if you are seeing this later on, still shoot me a message if you're interested in finding out about working together, because there's always something I'm offering. So awesome. And to end this one little piece of advice you could give somebody that's going to maybe be on a podcast today or tomorrow that maybe they could just at least try to, to, to be a better podcast guest. Yeah. So the first thing is don't try, just do. And the way you do that is just showing up, being present and being authentic and allowing things to just happen. Allow the host to do their job. Don't don't work against them and don't come in with your own agenda. Just allow the interview to unfold because that's where the gold really is. Nicole Hall and everybody, the five minute bark podcast today. Again, thank you, Nicole. And I thank you listeners for listening. Um, you're, you're awesome out there. You're really awesome. Uh, the first podcast I ever did, I was going to wonder who's going to listen. And now we've got people in over uh, 95, hundred countries out there listening. And I appreciate all you guys. And I hope you guys uh, reach out and you will find this on YouTube, of course, and you'll find this on iTunes and um, reach out to Nicole and um, we'll have her information in the show notes as well. Nicole, thank you again and we'll talk soon. You're watching the 5 Minute Bark Podcast on YouTube. If you like this episode, you just may like many more. Subscribe today by clicking the red subscribe button in the top right hand corner.